How's it going everyone? My name is Isabel Farmer and today I'm doing, in celebration of the one month release of Little Verned Maiden, I am doing a get dev playthrough of the game. Uh, I wanted to uh, show you some of the backstory and behind the scenes of what's going on. Uh, uh, although if you want to hear more specifics, I've got a lot on my devlog um, elsewhere on itch.io, link in the description. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, if you've been following my development process so far, thank you so much. You've, it, uh, it means a lot to me. Um, so yeah, let's just, uh, jump right into it. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I have the music off because it's, some of it is under copyright four and, uh, I don't want to go and, like, put a bunch of stuff on behind my video that, or behind this video that I don't own and get it taken down or something like that. So, uh, anyway... Um, one of the reasons I wanted to make this game is that I wanted to make a game that I could call my own. My school copyrights a lot of my, are of all my student games to help us protect it in case of lawsuits or something. So for instance, if someone were to take one of my student games that I made for the school and try to sell it, the school would sue them on my behalf. Like that, it's that sort of deal. Um, and also I just wanted to make a game, uh, set in my own... A world of my creation. I write a form of serialized fiction in emails. It's, you know, it's like fan fiction without it being a f fan part. And, uh, yeah, so mm, I just wanted to represent that and represent myself. So that's why I made the little Vern Maiden. All right, so nitty gritty stuff. Uh, one of the cool things about this game is its save system, uh, or at least I think so, um, in that it has one. Um, because. Oh, the music coming back on. Oh, hang on. Shh. It's not a great save system. Um, but one of the cool things about it is that if you, uh, is that it saves it all to player preferences, which isn't very cool, good. But the, uh, the if you know anything about Unity, it's basically just the built-in Unity save thing. It's only supposed to be for your preferences. But I used it for everything. Uh, the Mm, but basically it takes everything, writes it out to a string, and then saves that in your player preferences, and then unwrites it back out to what everything is. Uh, yeah. Mm, but I can, if at any time you need to reset your game, you can hit Control shift r and that's how I reset my game for the actual final build before I sent it out. So, uh, yeah, here we're working with a fresh copy of the game. Let's go ahead and, uh, jump right in now. So, um, the, uh, the game actually, when it restarts, it, uh, turns permadeath back on, because, uh, permadeath was a really important thing, aspect to me for the game, I think, to really sell home the theme of, or the, the, the concept and the theme of self-care, I wanted to make sure that if you didn't eat, and you didn't take care of yourself, you died. In the same way that if you don't take care of yourself in real world, you also die. But also, you metaphorically die, because you don't feel so good, because... Um, you know, and trying to work while you can't eat is, if you, well, not eating is bad, and I do that a lot. I forget to eat a lot, or I put production and being a productive human being above being, uh, you know, uh, before being a human being, and I don't think that that's something that we should encourage in our society. I think the burning the midnight oil, glorifying that, I think that's bad. What well, do you know what I think is cool? Taking care of yourself and being responsible and having balance in your life. So, uh, yeah, so this event, the events of the game begin six years before the actual, the, the opening sequence begins six years before the events of the actual game. And basically you go around and you talk to these people and what's happening here, now this guy here, Veltre, He's threatening to, um, he's trying to kill everybody, or make them, make them all follow him, uh, and have him become the new king of the north. But there hasn't been a king in the north for over, uh, 400 years, um, and instead they just have these, uh, families here that all hold the power in, in, in his place, waiting for him to return. And... Um, so he, uh, is, uh, trying to, uh, poison all of them. He's got these poison things out here, and this is also where you learn it's bad to hit them to see the poison poisons you. And also, um, if you break something, it says don't destroy property, you incur debt. Um, now some people say that, um, is bad because that I'm saying that people's lives don't matter, but destroying property does. Um, 
I don't actually agree with that statement. I just think it works well for the mechanics of this game. Um, anyway, so here he is, going insane. Um, and one of the cool things about this, actually, is that um, after this, he uh, locks the doors to this building. And from here on out, the people of Nova Thule, that's the city you're in, uh, decide that they you can never lock this door again. So after this incident, a sign appears here in the Six Years Later version that says, um, you can't lock the door or you'll be thrown out a window. Um, so Veltra here is the head of a family known as, uh, House de Feltoir, um, and he, uh, he has three daughters, uh, one of whom takes, was engaged, actually, to the person in your household here, Gil, and, um, uh, she, after this, Gil breaks it off of her, and this is actually kind of all in the background of the game. One of the things that was really important to me is that there was a lot of interpersonal, uh, what do you call it, like, relationships and conflict, and, like, everyone knows everyone and has lived with each other their whole lives, so it's, it was really important to me to just sort of, like, have that be around and available for you to see, uh, because I think that that's how real people work, right? They have a lot of history, and they don't just talk about it, they don't just explain, like, Oh, so in did you know that the causes of World War One mean that today we can't use we can't use poison gas on people? Like no one says that, right? And that's why we think using poison gas is bad. No, we we just we just kind of like that, but that's true. Uh, we just sort of feel it, uh, and there's not that many who can make that sort of explanation. So anyway, uh, here are all the people you need to kill. They're the heads of all the family. This is Lucienne, the daughter of the crazy guy. Um. This is, uh, Issa Rala's mm, killing quest. Um, this is Sylvester's. Uh, he's a very military-oriented guy. He runs the military of the town. Um, and as you see, whenever you talk to them, their thing comes up. You're just fighting Gil for the training here. Um, so yeah. So, uh, the sun- now, the thing with the whole Sun King incident is that um, after that incident, uh, the other thing that happened is Lord Einhard de Magnia, that's the head of your household, he, uh, passed away, and when he did, he left this letter behind, mm, revealing that he actually never really liked you very much. It also reveals your origins, that you were, um, an orphan that they found on the street. Um, I don't talk about it that much in game, but basically what happened to... The, and this is just all part of the naturalistic world building that I'm trying to do here. But Arliss are here, she was born in a fishing village, and then dragons attacked in a big dragon storm. And that's where she got her burns, and then she was picked up by this family. Um, and it might seem like a rich family being nice, but actually it's a philanthropist stunt, because that's how rich people behave. Um, but, despite it being a philanthropist stunt, it's actually been really good for her, because now she's a very successful hitman. And, uh, that's a valid occupation in this world. And, um, she's in a loving relationship with Gil. Uh, this is his room. Uh, you can see his portrait on the wall. Lord Einhard, the dead guy. And in here it explains how he died. Um, and as you can see, no one uses this room. It's very empty. Uh, no one sleeps in here and you can't interact with this bed. But you can interact with the bed in Gil's room. And in your own. Uh, which I'll show you in a second. See, here it is. Here's your room. So, uh, this whole city has a whole, um, set of living, breathing characters. Um, like, people just- there's all these thugs roaming the streets, and they can go through buildings on their- or root into buildings on their own. Like, if they're running away from you, they'll actually- that's actually part of the AI, is that the people run away from you when their health is low, but they'll run towards you if it's high enough. Um, and yeah, anything can go through doors, including people and random movable objects. Um, and, uh, there's, mm, there's, like, statues and, mm, uh, all the houses. This is House de Aramix. Uh, it's the house of, uh, that's all about fighting in war. Uh, the guy I was telling you, Sylvester, is the head of it. And uh, that's why honor, rigor, glory is, like, their, their words. All of them have words that, like, represent their values. Uh, House de Magni is actually, a lot of people were telling me they don't know what it means. It's a shoe axiom for ascendancy, which means 
ignore laws so that you can achieve your goals, uh, which is really appropriate for House Magnia. Now, one of the downsides to the living, breathing uh, schedule that I wasn't able to code in is that people just sort of appear, as you just saw there. Like, this is Celia. She is the middle daughter of mm, House de Feltoir here. Um, sometimes uh, the house has a bit of a reputation for being, like, very uh, sex positive, we'll say. Um, but some, but, uh, you know, not everyone views that as a, in a positive light. Uh, that's why their house words are in love and war. They're all about seduction. Uh, so anyway, what, as I was saying about the schedules, um, it's a little bit, so they, it's a little bit jarring. I wanted them to, in like the last five minutes, to lurp towards the door. That means, uh, linearly something, I don't know. Basically it means at every second you move halfway towards the door, and then that means eventually they get to the door because computers can't calculate numbers that small. And then they would, so it looked like they would leave the room five minutes before the hour hits, but otherwise they just teleport on the hour. So that's, that's how that works. Um, but the, uh, the characters move around the city, um, and eventually you can learn all their schedules if you really pay attention to all of them. Like, um, for instance, you, and then people sort of give you hints about that. Like, everyone talks about how, um, noon is when court is held, so as you can see, there's no one here now, but, um, uh, oh, and here's that sign I was telling you about, about the Sun King incident. Yeah, so you can't lock the doors, or you'll be defenestrated. Yeah, so anyway, um, there's a lot of, and there's also a lot of, uh, lore just sort of hidden around places. Uh, for instance, here is half of a book um, about, um a seal maiden, or a selkie, named Ronshock. Um, and Ronshock, which is spelled in the most French way I could possibly manage, um, because Nova Thule is supposed to be, like, if the, if Irish Gaelic was spelled with French spellings, um, and trust me, I don't really know how French spellings work, honestly. I'm not as much of a linguist as I'd like to be. So I kind of just eyeball it, and then I just sort of say, yeah, that's good enough, mm, um, as an American. Uh, so the French will, are probably all doubtlessly screaming, um, but that's, that's fine. You know what? I'll get French consultants on my next game if I can afford them. Um, so yeah, uh, there's, there's little bits of lore everywhere. Oh, I'm being attacked! I gotta go! Ooh! <laughs> uh, oh, you can pet the rheumator. It's everyone's favorite part. It makes noises. This one knows you. There's another one that doesn't know you and it's in a different part of town. So, anyway. Um, oh, hi, Gil. That's right, we're training. I forgot. Well, we're not. Um, so, uh, here, one of the other cool things about this is that, about the lore, is that because there's little bits of everything, there's, like, sub-stories hidden in the background. Um, so, um, there's this one about Hitterloin, who is an explorer who traveled the world and documented his, uh, travels, and so these books are just around for you to interact with and read about if you want to, but you can cancel out at any point by going back to attacking things. Um, just because I don't want to make you read if you don't want to read. Um, so yeah, he traveled the world. He went both to the Abyss, and to, which is where magic comes from and why, every, why everything is weird. Like, why, there's, why the game randomly turns into a bullet hell, hell during boss fights and uh, why you can come back from dying. And then there's the Upper Continent, which is why light never changes in the town. And it's not because I didn't want to not code in a day-night cycle. No, it's because the whole town is under an Upper Continent. And, like, light can creep in because the Upper Continent's a different shape from the Lower Continent. Uh, it's on these giant tall pillars. Um, and, yeah, so I just have this, like, I just have stuff around and it's intended to inspire your curiosity so you can follow it throughout the town. Um... Now, while some things, like the books, have fixed dialogue, uh, the characters do not- hang on, Gil, we'll, we'll deal with you in a second. So, for instance, um, excuse me, yes, excuse me, excuse, oh, excuse me, excuse me, okay, um, so for instance, if I go in here and I talk to Isarala here, um, she'll talk, um, about basically anything. Uh, in this case, she's right now, she's talking about Selkies, and she, uh, because Isarala's house, uh, House de Romanoc, they are- sort of like, um, the communists of the North, um, and they basically believe that everyone is, uh, should be, basically the people's voice is the most important in the government, whereas many other, many other people in the government believe that people who are taught to be in the government should be in the government, um, in this town. 
And uh, she's, you know, but she has good, there are good points and bad points to her philosophy. Um, she has complaints about the other houses, and you, every time you talk to people, a random dialogue bit has, uh, is chosen from their selection of dialogue. And, um, now, this is mostly because I don't know how to program. So, one of the important things to me was, uh, was because I basically could, the, because I don't have a good way of flagging if dialogue has been read or not, uh, basically I had to make it so that dialogue would be random. And, therefore, the way that I structured the narrative for each character is that you would learn more about them the more you would talk to them. Now, that sounds really obvious because, like, that's how real life people work. Um, but also, uh, I had, so I tried to make it so that everything would, everything ha followed a form of storytelling called Kisha Tenketsu, uh, which is a Japanese form of storytelling that doesn't involve conflict, in which you have a, a beginning, a setup, or a setup, a development, a twist, and a resolution. And basically it's where you, you have two moments in which you establish a fact. In the third act, you create some sort of surprise, and then the fourth act shows you how you should have seen the surprise coming all along. Um, now, I don't know how well I actually did that, but that's how each of their individual dialogue plays. And that's how I kind of tried to make their overall story play. Like, each time, like, when you talk to her, you get the sense that she's pretty earthy, and that she's pretty, um, and that she cares a lot about lots of different types of people. And, um, but then she does things like this, where she says, I don't understand poor people. Like, for instance, my boyfriend. And, like, that can come across, and while she means well, obviously, she's not, she's being truthful when she's saying that she doesn't have that experience. She was born into a place of privilege, and sometimes that means they have differing opinions. Uh, her boyfriend, by the way, Neophel, is right here. She comes and visits him every day at around 10 a.m. Um, Neophel over here has some, has different info for you, and he talks about other members of the house, and uh, his whole character arc is dedicated to um, how... Uh, how being an artist is difficult, and, um, and he t also talks about his job, and, you know, and, uh, yeah, that sort of thing. I tried to give every character sort of a surface level thing that was about them, and a deeper level thing, uh, because I don't like, because that's something that's really important to me, is that I believe that everyone's just sort of a human being that's trying their best, and, uh, no one person is evil. Everyone's just trying to do their very best for the world. And some people, for their very best, unfortunately, because they don't, either because they don't know, or in their perspective it doesn't matter, it, it's not doing the best. Uh, for instance, like, um, all these people right here are attacking me because they think that I'm a problem, but, but actually I'm doing a, but actually my family's doing a pretty good job of running things, but we're also really brutal, so like, is efficiency, if I'm a good, are we good, at, if we're good at ruling the north and keeping out invaders and making it so that we can have our independence and rule how we want, is that, is that more important than, than doing it nicely? Uh, and that's something I really just want people, well, I don't necessarily want to offer answers to things. I do want them, I want this sort of be, to be a way that people can talk about it. So, anyways, I'm just running around around here anymore, so let's go talk about, um, Let's go look more into the history of this world, specifically. Um, oh, hello. I gotta go. Oh, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. Hang on. Goodbye. Hey, look, he's carrying the pot. He went away. Okay. So this is the Chevalier Academy. And up here, they have a sword in which um, you can hear about the Once and Future King. Uh, the Once and Future King is inspired by uh, King Arthur, sort of fused with... Oh, what's his name? Um, the Irish guy. The Irish guy sleeps under a hill. I've forgotten his name. Um, but he is, um, so he, I appear, had him, I wanted him to exist in this world to hold uh, a lot of weight. You actually saw this, his statue earlier, but I wanted the story to have more weight. In fact, the main story that I've been telling with all this, and this is kind of, this whole game is kind of a prelude to, is about the return of heroes in the face of a uh, global catastrophe, which is unfortunately becoming increasingly relevant in the year 2020. Um, and I wish it wasn't. But uh, the that's about all how all the heroes who went to sleep during some point in their life and are promised to return someday um, are returning to the earth 
uh, to help their country, and uh, so he'll be returning hopefully in a subsequent game. Uh, one of the other things that was really important to me in this story uh, also was the uh, theme of self-care, which is in the tagline, Assassin Life Sim, about murder and self-care. Um, that's why uh, food has such benefits and is, uh, is, what thing, is the thing that prevents the permadeath. So you use all these different foods, they all have different effects. There's also an eating mini-game. Oh, hi, Hadrian. Uh, this is Isarella's brother, and they all move around the city, and, you know, you, they all talk to them, they all have their own sort of way of speaking. Uh, Hadrian's kind of a punk, uh, so he doesn't like talking to you, and he uses lots of things. Okay, so here's a cake. It's a very badly drawn cake. But when you go move your cork around, you can eat it. Uh, it's just sort of supposed to emphasize the, like, joy of actually eating food on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. So, yeah, uh, why don't we talk about how a boss fight is coded, which means I have to go back and find Gil here. Um, let's see, 1 p.m., he's in court. Uh, now, fighting, finding out where people are is kind of hard. There's, here's Derecina, she's the youngest of the girls in uh, House de Feltoir. Um, so, yeah, oh, by the way, if you attack people in public, they act, make everyone else around you hostile, and it becomes very difficult. Hi, I need you to go. Okay, Gil, let's go fight. Um, oh, we've triggered dialogue. It's a bug! Ah! So this game is pretty janky. I'm not very good at coding, so this is a miracle that honestly anything works. Um, hang on, excuse me, hang on, excuse, oh, excuse, excuse me, I need, I need to go, bye. I gotta go. Um, it's a miracle that any of this game works at all, honestly. Okay, hang on, can we go? Nope, we can't, I broke the game. I'm sorry, everyone. Botched run, botched run, ooh! I did it! Okay. So, the way that boss fights work is that um, when you get into this boss arena, you can talk to them. Um, and this is the same way I have all my cutscenes set up. It's that it starts a hard-coded script. Uh-oh, hard-coding alert. That means it's bad for anyone who's not in the know. It, it means that I didn't, instead of making it like a lot of things I could put together in pieces, it means that I only got one thing. Um, I, got, I wrote a fresh thing for each thing. It's bad. Um, so, it iterates... There's an iterator, it's a number that tracks what stage of the cutscene I'm on, and then at different set, mm, stages, it sets specific conditions, such as you can move, time stops, dialogue pops up, mm, characters animate across the screen, that sort of thing. In the cases of boss fights, it's you teleport in, you talk to them, you fight them, they say their closing statements, you get money and teleport home. And, um... Yeah, so, the combat, I don't know how well it did its job. It exists, um, but here, um, the, the fight is intended to encourage this sort of in-and-out sort of behavior, and every time you attack, it shoots you back. Um, I wanted there to be a force wave, but I didn't get that coded in. So here we are instead, with this. Uh, this is a training round, so obviously it's very simple. Um, but all, but, uh, the other fights are a little bit more complicated, and I'll let you play the game yourself to see them. Last but not least, uh, one of the un other important things about this being a life sim is I wanted players to have moments that are just sort of quiet and for themselves. Like this ocarina here, where you can just play it. Do, 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 do. Anyways, I need practice, but that's a small tail jig. Uh, and you just want to have moments that it's obviously not as, like, fancy as all as like Animal Crossings, but I wanted you to just have some moments where you could quietly spend some time with yourself taking care of yourself. Um, so yeah, there's some neat behind the scenes looks at how things are coded and why I chose to do things. This is a brief tour of Nova Thule. I suppose I haven't shown you some things, so um, I'll do some final thoughts and miscellaneous things here. You can make the hour advance. Uh, some people thought this was a command, and I was that was unfortunate. Needed more playtesting. Um, yeah, ooh. 
Uh, this is the household that everyone misses for some reason, uh, but it's past the sign. This is down with the rich. Here's the rheumatoid that doesn't like you. Uh, this is where uh, the selfies, by the way, that's why they're seals, um, are staying here in House de Romanoc. Um, they have a green color because they're supposed to be earthy. And they also have free food laying around their house. Well, not free for you. They charge you for it, but it's free-ish. Um, and yeah, they're sheltering lots of people in their house. That's why you have the little selkie tents out here. Um, and we didn't go inside House de, de, uh, de Feltoirs yet. That was House de Romana. Oh, this is the secret dude. This is the puppet master. He knows a lot about anatomy. And he's crazy. Hmm. 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 Um, but he's actually. But one of the things, his twist, for instance, is that he has a girlfriend that he genuinely likes. He's actually dating Darasina. <sighs> oh, she was, she was here a moment ago. But he's actually dating her, and um, he thinks that she's sweet, and she thinks that he's really talented at. Uh, putting humans back together, because he knows a lot about anatomy, and that's why he makes all these anatomically correct puppets that you can find throughout the city. Alright, last stop here in House de Feltar. Um, as you can see, there's a bunch of shirtless guys here, because it's supposed to help sell the idea that, um, Lucien, uh, like, seduces people. Um, teaches them to throw bottles at you, and this is, like, the frat boy party house. Um, and, um, yeah, but... I like to believe that Lucienne is more than just, like, kind of a mean lady, um, but instead she's more of a very confused person who's dealt with a lot of people in her life, like her f insane father who abused her, um, and so her response to that is to s get as many people to like her as possible, but unfortunately, um, some people see past that, um, that confident face of hers. I don't know if she's even here in here right now. She's not. That's why she has a mirror in her room, because she's vain. But, um, but she also needs to do some self-reflecting. <laughs> but I hope that people can, like, see past that and realize that actually she's, like, and she's actually kind of, you know, lonely and sad and doesn't know how to get people to genuinely respect and like her, so instead she just manipulates them into it, and then the cycle of abuse continues. And that was something else I wanted to talk about with my game, is just that people who abuse their power will continue to abuse their power, and there's not much you can do with it. With that. Or you can't, not much else you can do about that. Alright, and then here I'll end. This is like, oh, look, it's the Puppet Master, he's outside, <laughs> hi! Yeah, you see? He blushes. He thinks she's cute and so wholesome. Makes puppets, creepy puppets. All right. Well, uh, that's it for my dev walkthrough. Let me know if there's any other parts of the city that I didn't cover that you wanted to see. Um, and uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll stick around. Like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to click, ring the bell, leave a comment in the comment section below, and all that stuff. And you probably hear it a lot. So I'm gonna I'm gonna whisper it really softly so that you remember. Because you have to listen, lean in and listen. I have a propensity for ASMR, I'm sorry. Alright. Uh, <laughs> okay. Bye-bye.